So I got the chance to get Zoe out and all the others at the, the weekend to a uh, droid gathering, which was really, really good. But the great thing was I got to use this for the first time properly out in the field. Now, it's great having a radio control and, you know, getting it back and stroking it and caressing it and thinking, wow, what a wonderful bit of tech it is. But tech's only as good as the tech and, well, it's only good if it actually works. So a little bit of feedback on this I thought would be, might be worth doing for anybody that's thinking of buying one of these is it worth the money or is it worth going for you know the more expensive spectrums on Fortabas or, or whatever so interestingly right um i'll tell you what the response is amazing in terms of the, the 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 millisecond delays now i don't i'm not an expert i don't know whether the radio that i had which was a dx18 had a slower response in terms of me inputting a command to the droid to the receiver i don't know but this one is just so positive it's just almost too instant i almost have to relearn that when i press the button it's going to do something um another great thing is that the, the um the curbs that can be programmed in i'm far more advanced than the dx18s so what i really can do by setting switches for different curbs meaning that when I'm, when I'm driving, when I move between different surfaces, I don't get any, any kind of jittering across different surfaces. I get much more stable driving on a surface. So whether I'm on carpet, whether I'm on concrete, whether I'm on wood, I can flick a switch and I can have the same input for the same output. So that, I, I did that on the DX18, so, you know, but this is better. There's more of them. The screen is clear and I found myself looking at it a little bit more Obviously on the DX18, it's just, there's not, there is a screen, but there's not much information in it. Telemetry, I'm not sold on that. It has telemetry on it, but I didn't really use it. But then saying that I never really used it on the DX18. I tend to use on her, I tend to look at the, the meters on the front. So I know what my voltages are. Um, I, ca I have got warnings set on it. So if my voltage goes low, I do get warnings. But again, I could do the same on the DX18. In terms of its, it's nicer to hold, it's more compact, and I must admit, less fatigue on your arms. So that is a real positive for it. I do find these, these bits here a bit creaky. These are like little slide-on pieces that go over it. Now I guess they're slide-on because you can get them in different colours maybe, or I don't, I don't know. But they generally just slide-on, I found them moving, I've actually glued them on. And then better now they're glued on, they don't move around as much. Um, switches are good, I found the strap awful. The strap on the DX that I had on the DX18 was much softer because I tend to wrap it around my arm, not put it around my neck, but that's just a strap. You can put whatever you want on there. Now, input. Um, handle, same as the DX18. It's actually very, very easy to carry. <sighs> Is it as robust? I don't know. I don't know. I had the DX18 for such a long time. I've been using that DX18 for over a long time, I don't know, over five years. Longevity, I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we will tell. Gimbals on it are great, really smooth for driving. Um, and the control buttons, you know, you've got so much choice. Which brings me to an interesting little uh, observation. Now, her utility arms, I've always had set on this switch here. So I can just basically go open, close, open, close, open, close. From a puppeteering point of view, I, I can react very quickly to people when they wave at her or anything like It's like click, 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 click. And I decided to move it to this to make it variable. Affirmative. I have to excuse the, the trigger because the sounds are triggered on these. To make it variable. Affirmative. 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 So I could go faster or slower if I wanted to. But I found it next to useless. Um, I found it too slow actually being variable. So what I've done is programmed it. There's a button on the back here. I've programmed the top one to this button and you can see the difference. If I use the slider at the side. Affirmative. Affirmative. Whereas if I use the top button. momentary button much easier so I'm going to reprogram this one I had both of them on the slot on these side controls because I just thought it would be easier it's not easier it's actually easier just click 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 like I had before but obviously before I had switches on the top so I'm going to try fingers on the bottom because I didn't have those two control switches on the other one but on the whole generally it's been really really good batteries seem to last forever 
Um, this plastic is interesting in that the Velcro I normally stick on there to stick my other controller on for the sound doesn't want to stick on it. But then maybe that's good testament to the quality of the plastic, maybe, I don't know. But there you go, first, first test run with this and a big thumbs up. A lot lighter weight and the difference in the money, you can't, you can't knock it. I mean, if you look at what a DX20, was it DX20, DX21 is going to cost me? It's give me the equivalent 20 channels of this. It's a different, different world. So, hand, you know, real thumbs up to the FR Sky uh, X20S. Brilliant control, really good.